And I'm so happy to be here with all of you today. So as maybe some of you Angelinos already know, LA is the second largest city in the US and we really stand out as a leader globally when it comes to taking climate action. So um, today I'd really love to share with you all about LA sustainability vision, how we're implementing that and also how you all can get involved as organizations as well as as individuals. Um, so half of the world's populations lives in cities, which is why we're the center of commerce, innovation, travel, and culture. But it's also the reason why we're particularly vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. We see in our own city of Los Angeles, worsening heat waves, historic droughts, and record setting wildfires. We not only need to build resiliency to address the risks, but work to prevent them from getting worse. So tackling climate change is about more than prevention and adaptation. It's also uh, includes many benefits, including big savings and healthcare costs, because greenhouse gases are often connected to highly with air pollution as they come from many of the same sources. According to the World Resources Institute, taking bold climate action could conservatively result in direct economic benefits of $26 trillion and prevent 700,000 premature deaths. 65 million new low carbon jobs could be created by 2030 worldwide alone. So this would more than offset any jobs lost during this transition, as well as bring enormous economic benefits. But all of this demands immediate and aggressive action. So with this in mind, Mayor Garcetti has made Los Angeles a model in planning and implementation of climate action through LA's Green New Deal. So in 2015, Los Angeles released its first ever sustainable city plan. It was accompanied by Executive Directive 7, which institutionalized sustainability in city government by establishing chief sustainability officers in 18 key departments. That Greg Spots, who will be uh, coming after me, is, is just one of those people. So Mayor Garcetti made a commitment that not only would the city report annually on its progress towards achieving the plan objectives, but every four years, the city would reevaluate its goals and ambitions. So despite the worsening impacts of climate change, just a few short years later, the Trump administration announced the withdrawal from the Paris Climate Agreement. I'm sure many of you remember that. In response, Mayor Garcetti went about working with mayors across the country, as well as across the world through climate mayors and the C40 Climate Leadership Group to demonstrate that cities are still in, that we're still committed to meaningfully address climate change. So at the same time, internally, we began working with local stakeholders and community leaders to develop a more expansive and ambitious roadmap to protect our environment, strengthen our economy, and build a more equitable city. In 2019, after a year of stakeholder engagement and quantitative analysis, LA's Green New Deal was released. So what is LA's Green New Deal, which I keep talking about? <laughs> Uh, as I mentioned, it accelerates our 2015 targets with new aggressive goals and a more expanded agenda. And it clearly lays out our path to carbon neutrality. It's one of the first city plans that was ever put together that's compatible with the Paris Climate Agreement. And um, meaning that we're gonna become carbon neutral by or before 2050. We're proud to say that we remain on track to achieve that goal. Environmental justice and equity are a cornerstone of this work as we prioritize communities that have historically borne the brunt of environmental degradation and are the most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. Finally, the plan is conscious of LA's role as a major global city to demonstrate the art of the possible when it comes to climate action. So the the plan is far more than a book that just sits on a shelf detailing all of our dreamy aspirations. It is truly a roadmap towards achieving our 445 initiatives that assign responsibility and due dates to departments throughout the city. But Greg might go into more detail about how fun it is to have to actually implement some of those initiatives. So as you can see by the breadth of our work, LA's Green New Deal goes well beyond simply reducing carbon emissions. We're tackling environmental inequality, affordable housing, homelessness, food deserts, and biodiversity. 
This is all part of our plan to holistically build a more sustainable city. Nevertheless, reducing greenhouse gases are, remain a central pillar of our work. So I'll focus right now on our five zeros. In inventorying our greenhouse gas emissions, it became clear that uh, there were five key sectors that needed to not just change, but fundamentally transform for us to achieve carbon neutrality by 2050. The five zeros, as we like to call them, focus on our energy grid, building stock, transportation system, waste, and water supply. So as you can see, for the goals that we've set out for our five zeros are to achieve 100% carbon-free energy by 2035. This is actually, and I'll go into this in a little more detail later, something that we've accelerated from the original 2019 plan. We're looking to transform 100% of our buildings, our new buildings, to become net uh, zero carbon by 2030 and all buildings by 2050. We've sent 80% zero emission vehicles in the city by 2035 and 100% by 2050, and 95% of our landfill diversion rate by 2035 and 100% by 2050. And last but certainly not least, 100% of our wastewater to be recycled by 2035. So if we're successful in our effort, the potential benefits are tremendous from preventing 1,650 premature deaths to saving $16 billion to creating hundreds of thousands of jobs. There's not a moment to lose in this fight so let me tell you a little bit more about what specifically we're doing. So as I mentioned, um, in terms of achieving our 100% clean energy goals, transitioning LA's energy grid away from fossil fuels and towards carbon-free energy is absolutely foundational to LA achieving carbon neutrality. When LA's Green New Deal was released in 2019, the goal was to achieve 100% carbon-free grid by 2045. Many said, this. This wasn't possible for a city of our size and complexity. But working with the US Department of Energy's National Renewable Energy Lab, NREL, we undertook a groundbreaking study called LA100. It determined that not only is this achievable, it's reliable, affordable, and we can actually do it 10 years sooner than we had originally set. So by 2035. LA's grid is now powered by 62% clean energy, and we're the number one solar city in America. Through this partnership with NREL, we're charting a course towards 100% goal and serving as a model for similar studies across the country. Yes. A milestone that happened last week. Tell me. Um, so, you know, battery storage is a new thing in California where you can take some of the excess solar in the midday and shift it just a couple hours later into the demand peak in the late afternoon. We'll, Someday late last week, at the peak at like 5.30 p.m., there was more battery storage in the grid than nuclear. Like battery storage is already surpassing one of the long-standing fuel sources. So that's part of how we're going to yeah. get there, right? Yeah, we're seeing this transition happening right before our eyes. And I mean, I think California and L.A. specifically is showing like, you know, it's not, we're not some tiny town that's trying to, to do something. We're the second largest city in the country and we're saying, hey, we can do it, so can you. So thank you, Greg. So building towards um, LA, buildings are LA's largest source of climate pollution actually. And so tackling our building stock is integral to achieving carbon neutrality. So unlike our energy grid, we're, we have to transform our buildings on a case-by-case -case basis because they're not privately owned, they're largely not privately owned and it's very decentralized. So achieving our goal of making all buildings net zero carbon by 2050 and dramatically reducing building energy use, we have to take a two-fold approach of energy conservation and electrification. So in 2016, Mayor Garcetti signed into law one of the most ambitious and comprehensive energy and water efficiency laws for existing buildings in the country. Efforts such as this have saved customers actually $1.8 billion, and we've seen a 35% reduction in carbon emissions from buildings during the mayor's term. We're greening our buildings by being the very first city to adopt the Buy Clean California Act, using low carbon materials in municipal buildings and infrastructure projects, while also committing to electrifying all new municipal buildings. 
Because of this effort, because of efforts such as these and the commitments that of building owners, LA was recently named the number one energy star city in the country for the 10th time in a row, meaning that we have the most green buildings out of any city in the country. All right, so getting to zero carbon transportation. We're known as the car capital of the nation, as maybe many of you experienced on your way here. But with the investments that we've made in our transportation system, we've really transformed our city into the electric car capital of the world. This has been done through a variety of measures to help move the market. So for instance, in 2018, Mayor Garcetti and 21 other US cities and counties leveraged their collective buying power and made a commitment to purchase 350 EVs, which sent a strong signal to the market that uh, EV, the EV transportation transformation was happening. This collaborative has grown to over 250 cities, counties, transit agencies, port authorities, and universities who are all committing to purchasing over 4,000 EVs. LA now has the second largest municipal fleet in the nation. Uh, turning to the port of Los Angeles, which is the busiest container port in the Western Hemisphere, and also a significant source of air pollution in the area, we've established a clean truck fund to accelerate EV heavy duty truck deployment. We uh, have received a $25 million investment from Electrify America to invest in zero emission vehicle infrastructure at the port of LA and Long Beach. And we're also collaborating with partners across the Pacific. So in January, the port of LA Port of Shanghai, C40 Cities announced a first of its kind partnership to create the world's first trans-Pacific green shipping corridor between the ports in the US and China. So while waste is a much smaller percentage of our overall greenhouse gas emissions, it's also significant in terms of the emissions released from landfills. And it also holds a lot of potential in terms of providing power through anaerobic digestion along with revitalizing soil for composting. To be frank, the pandemic has slowed our efforts to achieve some of our ambitious goals that we set out in the Green New Deal. But as we adjust to this new normal, <laughs> we're reactivating our efforts to expand our organic waste collection. And in fact, this month, we've doubled down with an addition with 20,000 more um, I think it only just started the, like on the first of this month, 20,000 more households having access to at-home composting, along with additional drop-off locations at farmers markets across the city. So by January, we expect that all households will have composting availability. So last, but definitely not least, some of our most dramatic impacts of climate change are being seen in our water supply with historic droughts hitting much of the Western United States. Recognizing the severity of the crisis, Mayor Garcetti has set about transforming LA's water system into one that's self-reliant, developing innovative technologies to recycle our wastewater and investing in stormwater capture systems across the city. He's also championed the Save the Drop campaign, encouraging people to significantly reduce water consumption, a behavioral change that has become a way of life for many Angelinos. We're not stopping here though. Through Operation Next, we're transforming the Hyperion wastewater treatment plant into one of the largest water recycling plants in the world. So those are the five zeros that are focused on LA, but if we're gonna truly tackle climate change, we have to look beyond our borders. C40 cities, a network of the world's largest cities committed to addressing climate change in an equitable manner was chaired by Mayor Garcetti and serves as an important platform to innovate, support, and collectively lead on local climate change at the global level. So in the run-up to last year's UN Climate Change Conference, COP26, it was important to show the critical role that cities actually play in addressing climate change. Mayor Garcetti led the Cities Race to Zero campaign, which was an effort to get 1,000 cities to commit to reach net zero carbon by 2050 and cut their fair share of global emissions in half by 2030. In November at the conference, Mayor Garcetti was able to announce that 1,049 cities had signed on which marked the biggest commitment outside of national commitments at COP26. This has the impact of between the fourth and fifth largest emitter of greenhouse gas emissions in the world. So you might be asking, where do I fit into all of this? 
And um, LA has put together these toolkits. There's 10 toolkits and we're gonna probably expand them. But as you can see, it covers a wide variety of areas. So I will, you can, there's a bit.ly on the bottom, but I'll get into just two examples of, of things that you can all do. So uh, this one for planning California friendly landscaping, it directs folks to a variety of resources to reduce water consumption and support biodiversity. So as I hope you all know that the West is experiencing some of the worst droughts in 1,200 years. It's these kind of extreme conditions that offer the opportunity to improve your natural environment while reducing chemical uses and actually saving money. So DWP is offering almost 20 different rebates to reduce water consumption. So you could get as much as $2 million in technical assistance to install large scale water conservation systems and replace turf at your residential or commercial properties. There's high efficiency washer opportunities and toilets. And so the toolkit, it focuses a lot on sustainable landscaping, but also directs you to other ways to conserve water. So we also offer opportunities to get certified as a green business. So we offer free environmental consulting to make your business more sustainable and improve the health and well-being for employees. Businesses can participate and consultant will come in, identify rebate opportunities and cost saving measures that benefit both you and the environment. Once you implement these, then you'll be certified as a green business and you get offered networking opportunities and marketing perks. Um, where our goal is to certify 1,000 businesses as a green business by 2025. So I hope that this kind of gave you a sneak peek into all the different ways that you actually can participate. And, you know, I think in the face of climate change and the setbacks like the Supreme Court decision to limit the EPA's authority to regulate greenhouse gas emissions from power plants, it's really more important now than ever for states, cities, organizations and individuals to lead. So it's always gonna take each and every one of us to build a better future for our children, but there's no doubt that we absolutely can and we must do that. Thank you so much.